Good afternoon everyone and welcome to the temporary chapel here in the vicarage at St Margaret's Ilkley on this Tuesday the 14th of July. Tomorrow at 8pm we have our usual service of Compline uh, and then on Thursday there will be a podcast with Bishop Nicholas, the former Bishop of Blackburn. And this coming Sunday we will be celebrating our patronal festival at St Margaret's Day with our normal YouTube premiere mass uh, from 10.30 on our St Margaret's YouTube channel. Today the church celebrates the life and witness of John Keeble, the priest, Tractarian and poet. John Keeble was born in 1792, the son of a priest, and he showed early brilliance as a scholar, becoming a fellow of Oriel College, Oxford, at the age of 19, a few years prior to his ordination. He won great praise for his collection of poems, The Christian Year, issued in 1827, and he was elected Professor of Poetry in Oxford in 1831. A leader of the Tractarian movement, which protested at the threats to the church from liberal developments in both politics and theology, Keeble nevertheless did not seek preferment, and in 1836 became a parish priest near Winchester, a position he held until his death in 1866. Keeble continued to write scholarly books and was praised for his character and spiritual counsel. Yet he is still best remembered for the sermon that he preached in Oxford, considered by many to be the beginning of the Oxford movement, delivered on this day in 1833. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and, and try me. Test my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evil doers, and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, and, and go around your altar, O Lord. Sing aloud the song of thanksgiving, 
and and telling telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell, and the place where your glory abides. Do Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty, those in whose hands are evil devices, and and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the the great great congregation congregation I will bless the Lord. Glory Glory to to the the Father, and and to the Son, and and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, now, and shall shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. A reading from the Assize Sermon on National Apostasy, preached by John Keeble in the University Church of St Mary the Virgin Oxford on the 14th of July 1833. What are the symptoms by which one may judge most fairly whether or not a nation is becoming alienated from God and Christ? The case is at least possible of a nation, having for centuries acknowledged as an essential part of its theory of government, that as a Christian nation she is also a part of Christ's Church, and bound in all her legislation and policy by the fundamental rules of that church. The case is, I say, conceivable of a government and people so constituted deliberately throwing off the restraint which in many respects such a principle would impose on them, disavowing the principle itself, and that on the plea that other states, as flourishing or more so in regard of wealth and dominion, do well enough without it. What should be the tenor of their conduct, who find themselves cast on such times of decay and danger? How may a man best reconcile his allegiance to God and his church with his duty to his country, that country which now by the supposition is fast becoming hostile to the church and cannot therefore long be the friend of God? Should it ever happen, which God avert we cannot shut our eyes to the danger, that the apostolical church should be forsaken, degraded, nay trampled on and despoiled by the state and people of England, I cannot conceive of a kinder wish for her on the part of her most affectionate and dutiful children than that she may consistently act in the spirit of that most noble sentence of the prophet Samuel. God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. In speaking of the church, I mean, of course, the laity as well as the clergy in their three orders. The whole body of Christians united according to the will of Jesus Christ under the successors of the apostles. The church would first of all have to be constant in intercession. No despiteful usage, no persecution could warrant her in ceasing to pray as did her first fathers and patterns for the state and all who are in authority. That duty, once well and cordially performed, all other duties are secured. Secondly, remonstrance calm, distinct and persevering, in public and in private, direct and indirect, by word, look and demeanour, is the unequivocal duty of every Christian according to his opportunities when the church's landmarks are being broken down. Finally, The surest way to uphold or restore our endangered church will be for each of her anxious children 
in his own place and station, to resign himself more thoroughly to his God and Saviour in those duties, public and private, which are not immediately affected by the emergencies of the moment. The daily and hourly duties, I mean, of piety, purity, charity and justice. It will be no unworthy principle if any man be more circumspect in his behaviour, more watchful and fearful of himself, more earnest in his petitions for spiritual aid, from a, dead or from a dread of disparaging the holy name of the English Church in her hour of peril by his own personal fault or negligence. Let us pray. New every morning is the love, our wakening and uprising prove. Through sleep and darkness safely brought, restored to life and power and thought. New mercies each returning day hover around us while we pray. New perils past, new sins forgiven, new thoughts of God, new hopes of heaven. If on our daily course our mind be set to hallow all we find, new treasures still of countless price God will provide for sacrifice. The trivial round, the common task, would furnish all we ought to ask, room to deny ourselves, a road to bring us daily nearer God. Only, O Lord, in thy dear love, fit us for perfect rest above, and help us this and every day to live more nearly as we pray. Vouchsafe, we pray, Almighty God, to grant to the whole Christian people unity, peace and true concord, both visible and invisible, when you will and as you will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of the Eternal Word, in whose encompassing love all things in peace and order move, grant that as your servant John Keeble adored you in all creation, so we may have a humble heart of love for the mysteries of your Church, and know your love to be new every morning. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ our Redeemer bring us healing and wholeness. Amen. Amen.